Hello everyone and welcome to my Emmerdale News YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. It's safe to say that Kane Dingle, Jeff Hordley, from Emmerdale, is not the biggest fan of Ruby Fox Milligan, Beth Cordingly, and that he is an irrationally angry man. When the two are together, tragedy is just waiting to happen. Ruby is an expert at making others feel bad about themselves, and one person in particular that she finds challenging is Kane, whom she wants removed from Caleb's Willash, life. Her first move was to cause friction between the brothers, which she accomplished at Belle's wedding by disclosing Caleb's affair with Tracy. If she believes she always has the last say when she and Kane argue, she is misinformed. Ruby has made the decision that killing Caleb with kindness, or more precisely, presence, is a better course of action than attempting to keep him apart from his cherished dingles. The Beast becomes enraged by this deceptive behavior, and Kane believes it's time to take drastic measures by sending Ruby a terrible message. Reaching for a sledgehammer, he gets to work. Ruby had given the Dinkles some air fryers, which Kane gathers up and smashes to pieces, leaving the apartment looking like a rage room. Will Ruby, however, take the violent cue to back off? Naturally, she is unfazed and even enlists Chas, Lucy Pargeter, assistance to win Kane over by taking advantage of her post-operative weakness. Ruby throws an unplanned party for all the Dingles, but Kane is furious since he knows he was duped into going to meet Caleb. As the night wears on, Ruby's drinking builds to a crescendo, and the confused group is treated to an unannounced karaoke performance while she begs Caleb's pardon. There is pandemonium. It is evident to Kane that Caleb is not a genuine dingle when he is compelled to stand up for her. The situation is dire. There is an extreme tension between Kane and Caleb. Ruby is still worried that Caleb isn't giving her his whole attention, though. What will she do next? When Nate finds Caleb slumped over in agony the following day, he must decide whether to assist his sick uncle or let him pay for his actions. Rona Goskirk, Zoe Henry, who abducted baby Ivy in a fit of rage, will eventually find out what lies ahead for her after waiting weeks. Since she left with the baby and Gus came back to get her, Rona's life has been in limbo. Gus has been ruining her life ever then. In an attempt to convince her to admit guilt so he could have Ivy all to himself, he has given her a variety of falsehoods. He made an effort to persuade her that if she would only admit guilt, he would revoke the sale of his home and they would continue to be co-parents. Rona discovered the awful truth he had already sold the house and intended to leave for France as soon as Rona was given her sentence. Fortunately, Rona did not cave and stayed firm because she does not consider Ivy to be her daughter and does not view herself as a criminal. This is the moment when she will discover if it was a wise decision or not. When the court date finally comes, Rona and Marlon, Mark Charnak, are summoned in quickly. Unsurprisingly, Gus, Alan McKenna, starts manipulating the facts right away, leaving Rona speechless and appalled and unable to do anything but observe. However, Rona's defense group is prepared for him. They respond by challenging his purportedly moral character, which hurts conceded Gus. The next witness to testify is Vanessa, Michelle Hardwick, but the prosecution is pressing for a conviction, so she might not be well prepared. When Rona finally gets her turn on the stand, weeks of stress and a prosecution that continues to poke fun at her character cause her to lose her composure and lash out at Gus. Rona is terrified of how her outburst will affect the outcome when the court adjourns for the day at the worst possible time. Rona's future is being hotly debated among the wool pack in the meantime. April is terrified since the argument is fiercely contested on both sides. If Rona's friends can't decide on a fair verdict, how can a judge? Gus is ecstatic to see Rona outside the court, knowing full well that she may have wrecked her own prospects of being let go. 
All Rona can do at this point is wait until the jury goes off to deliberate. Is Rona going to take that smug smirk off of Gus's face, or has she forfeited her freedom? In Monday's, April 1, Emmerdale episode, Patty Kirk, Dominic Brunt, Rona Goskirk, Zoe Henry, and Vanessa Woodfield, Michelle Hardwick, received heartbreaking news. Pearl Ladderbanks had passed away. Actress Meg Johnson of the soap operas was reported dead in July of last year, at the age of 86. At the time, an official statement from Emmerdale's social media outlets stated that the late actress passed away peacefully and surrounded by her family. We regret to inform you that actress Meg Johnson passed away peacefully yesterday evening, surrounded by her loved ones, the statement said. Meg was a kind, gentle woman who exuded warmth and had a constant sparkle in her eye. Everyone who knew her will sincerely miss her. Meg began her Emmerdale career in 2003 as Pearl Ladderbanks, a character she played until her departure in 2020. Patty, Mandy, Ella, Paula Lane, Susie, Martell Edinburgh, and Vanessa were discussing Patty and Mandy's impending nuptials in tonight's episode. Their smiles vanished as Rona arrived, appearing upset, even though they were having a good time and chatting about their plans for the big day. In her palm was a package that Pearl's grandson Owen had sent. Rona broke down in tears and pulled out a letter confirming Pearl's death. Pearl spent a lot of time with Vanessa, Rona, and Patty because she was a veterinarian's receptionist. While ordering beers in the pub, the three of them talked about Pearl, whom Patty characterized as an incredible friend. Subsequently, he donned the blue sweater that had been enclosed in the parcel and disclosed to Susie and Ella that Pearl would yearly knit him a jumper for his birthday, which would always be either excessively large or overly small. Vanessa read the letter Owen had written, in which he explained how making the jumper for Patty had allowed Pearl to live longer than he had anticipated. Raising their glasses, the group made a toast to Pearl, a dear friend that they will truly miss. In Emmerdale, Danny Miller's character Aaron Dingle has been hiding something from his mother, Chas Dingle, Lucy Pargeter. After learning that there was a genetic component to her breast cancer, she encouraged her son and her two brothers to undergo BRCA2 gene testing. While Aaron's test was positive, those of Kane Dingle, Jeff Hordley, and Caleb Milligan, William Ash, were negative. He decided to keep this information to himself so as not to add to Chas's already mounting concern or expose him to inquiries and sympathies from the rest of the family. Rather, he informed Chas that he had received the all-clear, which greatly relieved her. Naturally, Aaron's doctor is aware that Aaron tested positive, yet as Liam Kavanagh, Johnny McPherson, is a close friend of Chas, learning that Aaron is lying to his mother is extremely upsetting for him. The two men's tensions have already begun to simmer as Liam tries to get Aaron to tell Aaron the truth about his test findings. Liam will find it harder and harder in the next episodes to conceal the secret from Chas, especially because she constantly asking him about Aaron. He finally says something that leads her to believe Aaron has been dishonest with her. She confronts her son, and despite his continued denials, she knows him well enough to realize that he is lying. Aaron is enraged with Liam for placing him in that situation after realizing he can't keep lying to Chas about his test results. We are aware that Aaron can become violent very fast when he feels threatened or enraged, and it won't take long for him to turn this on Liam. When Chas discovers that Liam appears to have been attacked, she is appalled and inquires as to whether Aaron was the one who injured him. Liam acknowledges that Aaron was the one, but he tries to comfort Chas as she becomes enraged. He adds that rather than coming in with all guns blazing, it would be wiser to handle the situation delicately with Aaron. Chas concurs, and the strategy is effective. Aaron talks candidly about how terrified he feels as a result of the gene finding comparing it to having a death sentence hanging over him. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, 
so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.